Hey, hey, what's up garden friends? Jeff here, how's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great, it's a crisp fall morning. It's about that time for me to go ahead and get these dug up, move it inside, and uh, figured this would be a good time to talk about how to do so. Uh, so it's probably too late for a lot of you. My apologies, probably should have released this a few weeks earlier. In these two containers here, these are the Colocasia Maui Gold. There are a couple things that I should note before really diving into this. First is that there are various methods to how to overwinter your Colocasias, and they're going to depend on, well, your preference and what type you're growing. So it's really important that you know what you have. So that's going to make a difference in how you should follow through with overwintering them. But the reasoning for this is that there are different types of colocasias. Some form corm, some form tubers, some are kind of in an awkward in-between place. You have your diploids and your triploids, and it, it does make a difference with what you're going to do with them. Just to start things off, if you grow some place where you can keep these in the ground during the winter, then this is a much more simple process. You just stop fertilizing a few weeks before your frost comes around. That's because you want to go ahead and uh, allow the nutrients to be taken back into the tuber or corm. As day lengths shorten, the growth will start to slow. Foliage starts to come out smaller, like you can see here on these in front of me. Plants will start to pull nutrients from their foliage and they'll push that back down to the corm or their tuber and the roots will start to die back and shrivel some. So it's because of that that I don't really like to do any pruning on mine a few weeks before frost just to allow them to get all those nutrients back down into whatever their storage mechanism is, whether it's a corm or a tuber. With ones that are in containers, it's a little bit different. When colocasias are in the ground, people don't really do a lot of pruning on them. When they're in containers, you have all this all this mess that comes over the side. Once they get to a point, kind of like this one right here, see how this one's all like pretty much done? Still has a little bit of softness to it, but there's not a lot left to take out of that. That I would probably go ahead and cut or maybe give it a couple more days because they will get more papery. There's a better example down there. See all those shriveled leaves down there? Those can go. They're not doing anything for the plant anymore. I usually benchmark my time to when I cut back on the fertilizing and get more careful with my pruning as to when they start to flower because those shorter day lengths and sometimes the cooler nighttime temperatures are more probably the extreme shift between day and night. That is what usually triggers the inflorescence to pop out from inside. And once I see that, that's when I go, okay, I'm gonna back off and leave you alone now and you just do your thing. Again, in pots, it's a little bit different because they might need more nutrient to keep growing. Now that we've allowed the plants to go ahead and pull all those nutrients back down where they need to be stored, just wait for frost to take out the foliage, cut the foliage down to the ground, mulch it very, very heavily, assuming you have some place where you need to mulch them heavily. If you, you don't, then you, well, you don't need to worry about any of this. I would say a minimum of four to six inches of mulch, probably more eight to 12 would be safer if you're north of zone 7B. And that also will depend on what type you're growing. Some are gonna be more hardy than others. Then for extreme protection, sometimes people will do what they do with the bananas and make a big wire cage around them, put a layer of mulch down and then fill the rest with leaves to help just keep the entire root zone and some of the outer root zone from freezing during the winter time or from freezing as hard during the winter time. Okay, well that was, ew, turbo, you, that's disgusting. But thank you for helping to clean the pool. For those of us who live someplace where you can't just keep these in the ground during the winter, that's when it becomes more important to really know what kind you have. So if you have the kind that has a tuber, a good way to know is that, well, did you buy it in a bag and it looked like it was full of like great big potatoes? Well, that's a tuber. Store those differently from the ones we'll talk about here towards the end of the video. You can also just do a quick Google to find out what you have. The majority of the colocasias with really, really, really big leaves on them, with an exception, most of those have tubers. If your colocasia is a type that develops a tuber, then it, the way you store them is much more simple. And you do it very similar to how you would with like a canna or a caladium. Pretty basic stuff. Before the first frost hits, you wanna go ahead and dig those up, cut off the dead foliage, rinse them off, allow them to dry, store them in peat or vermiculite, place them in a breathable container, and store that someplace that's dark, dry, cool, and frost-free. Then you can replant them as soon as it's safe to replant them. You can start them inside a few weeks before your frost. You want to get them going faster. I think it's easier just to let the ground warm up and put them in there. That's not what we're talking about here. Yeah, think great big leaves, like the various Esculentes, like the, what, Jack's Giant? I think that one's a tuber forming one. Yeah, no, the ones that come in a bag. And many, many, many other types. 
Not these, these are a different kind. Over here I have a massive clump of the Colocasia bikini teenies. These are from Brian's Botanicals. They're hardy here. I'm in zone 6A, 6B, I live right on the line. They die back every year, come back. They seem to survive whether I have them in a spot that's been mulched or not. They do really well here. These are a Colocasia that forms a corm, not a tuber, and they run all over the place. In fact, if you look in the garden bed over here where things are all torn up from having some things moved around, some storms, you can see all these little lines down here. Those are all the runners that these have shot out across the ground to put up more. Very prolific plants. They spread everywhere. Here's a better representation of a Colocasia that I do have to take inside during the winter time. These are the Pharaoh's Mask Colocasias. They're not hardy here. This is a better example of one that needs to go inside, doesn't form a big tuber. They need to be kept in a semi-dormant but still kind of growing like in between phase. So we'll just say that if this were in the ground, then what I would do with this before the first frost or freeze, preferably a few weeks before that, when temps are still like in the 40s and 60s, somewhere in there, that's when I would come in and prune off all but two or three leaves, dig them up, get as much of the native soil off of them as I possibly can. If you leave a little, that's okay. The main thing is you just don't want to damage the roots too terribly much, but you also don't want to put this in a pot, which is what you need to do next with a lot of soil that's going to hold on to too much moisture. Potting soil would be much better. So get them into a pot with potting soil, place them someplace cool, but it's also frost free. Make sure there's plenty of light and be careful not to overwater them. And this is all just in an effort to harden them off before you take them inside. You get them inside, put them someplace cool, but also frost free with plenty of light. And again, be careful not to overwater them. Winter care with these is not the same as during the summertime. Colocasias, they like things wet and nutrient rich, right? They don't like to dry out and they like lots and lots of fertilizer. It's not going to be the same thing indoors. Well, I should say it isn't likely to be the same indoors. Potentially it could be if you keep them in like a sunroom or you have a room that's very, very warm, like over 75 degrees and they want to keep actively growing. That's a different story, but most homes aren't like that. Getting them through the winter, that's the most tricky part. And what I usually do with them is I just sit back and watch the plant and I am very observant the first few weeks that I have them inside. I like to pay attention to the amount of water that I'm giving them and the amount of time that passes before those leaves start to just slightly droop. They'll just barely start to hang forward a little bit and that means they need more water. You can also feel the heft of the pot if it feels really dry probably needs water, but I like to just wait. But those first couple of waterings is when I just like to watch the plant and see what the plant does. And then I can gauge how much water I should be giving it during the winter time. Just kind of have to learn how you're gonna dance with your plant during the winter time. Don't expect full lush plants like you see during the summer times. Normally they'll only have a few sad looking leaves on them. That's totally normal. It's not gonna be true of all colocasias that you move inside. Some you can just keep growing throughout the entire winter time. And by the way, this also applies to the tuber kinds. Everything I talked about before, you can take all of them in in a pot and keep them growing all winter if you would prefer that over just digging and storing the tuber. Personally, I think if it has a tuber, it's a lot easier to just store that dormant, but you know, you do you. And also it can be confusing to figure out what kind you have. The best way to figure that out is well, when you dig it up from the ground the first time, you'll be able to see a really big hefty tuber. And well, if that's the case, you know what you got to do with it. Keep it dormant or go ahead and pot it up if that's what you feel like doing. Like with those Thai giants, like I mentioned, they take a long time to develop a big tuber on those. Remember that when you see people selling Thai giant bulbs online, probably not Thai giants. It's probably like a Jack's giant or just people scamming you. Those aren't normally sold as tubers. And if they are, they're gonna be a big tuber and they should be, I would think relatively expensive because it takes a few years to get a big tuber on those plants. But that's, that's neither here nor there. I think the final thing to mention would be pests and disease when you have them inside. The growth that comes out of the colocasias during the dormant period when you have them inside, the semi-dormant period when they're inside and not really growing much, those leaves tend to come out more thin and vulnerable. So it's a good idea to watch out for spider mites, aphids, mealybugs, those sorts of things. Just keep a watchful eye. If you see something, then, you know, get your soap and water out and clean that stuff off. And that's it. Not a lot to it. They're fairly easy to overwinter. The main thing is just to know what kind you have so that you can approach that however would best fit your plant or even your lifestyle. Because as I mentioned, you could keep all of them growing during the winter if you want to, but yeah, I, don't, I don't know why you would. Okay, that's it. Hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. Comment down below, say hi, tips, tricks, suggestions, always appreciated. Oh, this would also be a good time to note well, that's not a good shot. Later in the season, you start seeing little specks 
on your foliage and the leaves start looking sad and they're coming out small, that's normal. They're doing the dieback process. Totally okay. It's not anything you're doing wrong. Now, if that's happening in the middle of the summer, that's, that's a little different. But like I said, if you're within a few weeks of frost, your day lengths have gotten shorter. That's just what they do. It's okay. All right. As always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.